I've been playing shop tight ends for many years now, and here are my top five tips to get you to the top. Number one, small talk. Whenever you click on one of these, there's this icon here that has small talk. What this will do is build up your energy. So whenever you press small talk, you either fail here with a backfire, which means that you aren't, well, you're actually lost energy amount. Or you'll succeed and you'll get a predetermined set amount of energy. That energy is going to equal 10% of whatever your current mark is up into the maximum amount that you can have in this. So what that's going to do is that's going to fill up energy and lead us into tip number two. Tip number two, energy is king. So as you can see, there's two major different ways to spend energy, both of which are very, very efficient. So one is to surcharge. So if we spend the amount of energy we have, it actually increases the sale price. The base value is double, but there's a lot of things that we can do to increase this, which we can go over later. So now we went from what it was up to almost $10 million. So that is a big boost. We also always want to be able to purchase these. That's a little bonus. The second is that we can speed up the crafting here. So you see we got 35 minutes and 48 seconds left to craft this portable Kong. For 618 energy, we can we can get it. So we have 922, we can get this. This is going to go down periodically with time. So the closer to the end, the less energy you're going to be spending. So we'll go ahead and do that. And now what's going to do is now we can craft more of those and speed up our production rate in order to get through the items we need and to build up our storage. Additionally, what we can do is also something called a discount. So we always want to make sure we're small talking. And then, so we don't have much, but we can discount, which is going to cut this price in half. So you can see we're a little bit over half because of some boosts that I have. So now we've gained another 446 energy, which we can bank towards upgrading and surcharging here. So we can we can drop a, f a few thousand to build up quicker to be able to surcharge something that's going to get us a lot more money, such as some within this level three. So you can see that I have a I have a perk that sometimes automatically surcharges. I have a 10% chance. So this went up to $19 million, which is a big purchase. Additionally, what we can do is also something called a discount. So we always want to make sure we're small talking. And then, so we don't have much, but we can discount, which is going to cut this price in half. So you can see we're a little bit over half because of some boosts that I have. So now we've gained another 446 energy, which we can bank towards upgrading and surcharging here. So we can we can drop a, a few thousand to build up quicker to be able to surcharge something that's going to get us a lot more money, such as some within this level three. So you can see that I have a I have a perk that sometimes automatically surcharges. I have a 10% chance. So this went up to $19 million, which is a big purchase. Tip number three, focus on your goals. If you look down here at the bottom of the screen, we have this goals tab. We have two different things. We have tasks, which these self-populate and will give you spin tickets. So we can go down here, go to the fortune zone. We have a little, little um, casino type slot machine here. 
that we get different amounts of resources for. You can see the payout here. Triple sevens is 2,000. Staggers down to no match, you just get three. That builds up these little star points here, which you can redeem for different things. So these are items that are going to help you to build up your base. You can reroll them, but it's on a cooldown. So I would suggest not buying things that you don't need because these points are hard to build up. So if you are early on, research scrolls are really good to have, but right now I have a surplus of them. So it's not worth me buying. I have plenty of these, so these aren't worth it for me to buy either. But we'll go ahead and buy the loot bugle just to show you what happens. So we buy that, we get those into our inventory, and it'll get replaced. These will have a cooldown before they get replaced. So it's not always worth buying uh, without those cooldowns. All right. Going back, the second option is the bounty. So these are specific tasks that we can accomplish. So in order to do this, we'll, we'll craft three Olympus bows. This will give us three trophies that will go towards what something I'm about to show you. I actually have a perk that adds another trophy. Typically three is the top, but this will add four. So in order to get this, I'd have to go in and craft three Olympus bows. Another one would be surcharging. As this is something that we're already trying to focus on, we're just going to go in and take that and try to get a quick five bounty reward points and two trophies. Now where the, the bounty rewards all go into the guild. So we're going to go into our city and open up our guild. We can see that we have these grab bags here. So we open up here. You see that it takes a hundred of these in order to open up a pouch. Each of these pouches are random and they scale up as it goes. So we have exclusive things like these trophies here that we can get from there, which it looks like I've gotten all but four. But they also give like shards and ascensions and other items that are very useful. So it's a good idea, especially early and even later on, to keep spamming these to get up and get better items. Now where the bounties come in is here. So you can see that we have a weekly renowned and that's very important. We want to max that out so we can get the most amount of points. See, So here we get 200 guild points, but if we max it out, we get 1350. So it's important as not only you, but your guild continues to work together to get this. So we still have six days and 10 hours, and we usually make this without any issues. And now where that goes into is our guild perks. So this is how you upgrade your guild. So we do have an upgrade available. We're at 190. And then we get different perks whenever we pick this. So this one here adds bounty board slots. So we have an additional 16 bounties to pick from every day. Then we have cooldown choice reduction and a bunch of these. Now the important ones are going to be your resource capacity and then your table energies, which is going to help increase those maximum, maximum energies, which is very important. And then all sorts of other things. And then you have guild, you have guild boosts that you can do each, each week as well. So these are temporary that are only good for the duration of this period. So we have four days and 21 hours of resources left on this. So we can add here and it adds another day and 10 hours. And tip number four is to spend your gems to upgrade your shop. There's a lot of different things to upgrade and keep up with in this game. Um, 
But there's the primary things that you want to focus on is upgrading your shop to be the most productive, productive it can be. And there's a few different things that are very important. One would be your crafting slots. So you can see that you have these sets where you have to be a certain level and spend a lot of money in order to upgrade something. So I have to be level 85 to go up into my 13th slot. I'm only level 80, and it's taken me years to get here. To get to 85 would be a really long stretch of time. So it's unlikely that I'll get here re in a reasonable amount of time. Or we can spend gems in order to upgrade this and get an additional slot, which would give us 13 slots to be crafting from rather than 12. And this number goes up. Both these numbers go up as you unlock more slots. So it does start to be quite expensive. So 12,500 gems is no small feat. Another very important spark part to upgrade is to expand out your slots for furniture space. So you can see that I have to be level 99 and spend $25 billion in order to get my last slot, which is not going to happen for a very long time. Or I can spend 6,000 gems and upgrade this. So it is something worth building up to. Now having these slots in here is also how we want to ensure that we're getting as much energy as we can. So you can see that we have all of these different racks and such that contribute a different amount. So we look at the upgrade. We can see that right now this is producing 95 energy. We can upgrade it to go to 104 and this will bring it from 14 to 15. I believe that is my last 14 rack that I have. Now, when you hit 15, it starts costing additional resources. So you have these dragon marks. So I have 900 currently, but I could spend 100 of them and $100,000, and I can upgrade from 104 to 113 energy. So I get another 9 energy, but this is a pretty good amount of resources, and these are pretty limited. These only come from special events, and then there's a couple of drops that you can get. And also, you start off with only having a few of these available slots, and as you level up, you get more. So 1, 6, and 11, you get additional rolls of items to post into the shop. This also increases your maximum storage. The bins themselves increase the storage amount of each item. So right now, this leather bin can hold 189. We upgrade it, it goes to 209. And then if we go from, if we go above 15, we get additional bonuses. So this is where I like to spend my dragon marks, is to upgrade here into the resources because not only do we get to store more, but we get a resource generation bonus, which is very big. Another one to 2% across multiple items is a very big deal. So let's see here we got 2% going up to 3%. So I suggest starting off focusing on expanding out <clears throat> and maximizing your benches here in order to be able to abuse the amount of energy that we have. Because as we went over, the ma maximum amount of energy that we get off of a small talk is based on the difference of what we have available. So if we ha if this was at zero, we would actually get 513 energy off of one small talk. We have 655, so we're gonna, we'll get a little bit less than that. As you can see, we got 448 which is 10% of what was missing. So now that we have 1,100 here, then we can look at either speeding up or boosting that out. Another thing to spend gems on to upgrade your, <clears throat> your base is you can recruit new heroes 
So as you can see, I actually have a slot empty. But if I had recruited all these, which we'll recruit this one here, and then we'll retire him but we'll, just to show you. So to increase our capacity to where we can have more heroes running around, we can spend 2,250 gems, or we can wait to level 84. I'd say out of the three that I've shown you, this is the least highest priority in order to spend gems. I would spend gems first on getting a decent amount of crafting slots, and then focus in highly on expanding out to get more furniture space. That way you can get your, you can either focus in on getting your benches or your resources higher. Now the, the trap that I see a lot of people fall into is spending their, their, their gems early game inside the market. So let's just look here. So as you can see that you can, there's usually a cash amount and then a gem amount and it goes up. And then a lot of times there won't be a cash amount available inside the market. A good example of that is typically your your enchantments here. So you can see that we can purchase some of these for gold. But if we look at specifically the higher tiered ones, like let's look into the legendary, you can see that there is no gold price. And we have to spend gems in order to get these legendary pieces. And a lot of times it's quite a bit. So we can drop all of our resources in early game, picking up enchantments on pieces that are going to be outdated. The thing about this game is that they're constantly doing updates and they're constantly putting out new items. So until you have your base, your shop rather, where you want it as far as your production, I want to suggest dropping gems into low level items that are going to be replaced. I'd wait until you're hitting your max levels of everything and then hitting a threshold of where you can't pr proceed further in on your missions without dropping those gems. And we'll do some videos in the future. You can typically get away with running green and blue gear on appropriately skilled heroes into the top level gears, top level dungeons. So, in short, you want to drop your gems on upgrading your base early rather than focusing it on spending them on items. And tip number five, last but not least on this list, is to abuse the market system inside this game. Now, this is a pretty complex system, so we'll probably do some following up videos, but we'll do a brief overview of what I'm talking about so you get a grasp of what I'm talking about. So here we have our market tab inside the city. Here you can list items. Also, this is a very good place in order to store. So sometimes I'll do this whenever I have, I, I don't have enough rooms in my inventory. So I just place items for 75 items. I put two gems, which this is something that's not going to sell for two gems. And if it does, I'm more than happy to make that trade. But really it's just to make 75 more spaces inside. And I did the same thing with these snake charms here. No one's going to purchase these for two, but this takes it out of my inventory slot and frees up space. You can see here that I put a request in for this item that I need for 180,000. And then here for 590. So sometimes people will just quickly offload these for cash rather than gems into the purple and blue. This will help fill up your collections. Now, you can see here on the offers. So this is one aspect that we can do. So early game, whenever you are looking to purchase things that you need in your shop. So say that we need a whole bunch of low level things just to build up energy. 
So we can buy up a whole bunch of these swords at $340, right? And then we'll, we'll sell these at the price. So the base value is $340. It's on sale for $340. So we can buy these up at value, resell on the market surcharging, and then you get yours your amount for selling it at the bottom. And this is a quick and cheap way in order to build up your inventory, your energy reserves, so you can surcharge or speed up your other crafting. Now, sometimes, especially during events, you'll be able to find items that are below value. So looking here, which it doesn't look like at this time it is, now we're on gym price, so let's go to gold price low. All right, so we can see that $395 base value, this is 707. So right now we'd be selling this at a loss. But if you're if you're having a hard time getting hold of items to surcharge, this is also a good way to do it. So we're almost $400 in base value. So if we're surcharging even at a base, that's eight hundred thousand dollars, right? We can buy it at seven oh seven. So we can buy those. We can buy this and only sell it if we can surcharge it in the future. And then we'd make almost a hundred thousand dollars. And we didn't have to go through the process of crafting this, which is essentially a way to formulate money without having to craft all the items. Because it depends on what you're doing. You may be crafting up specific items that aren't the best for making money. Or you might be, if you spend a lot of time selling out of your shop, you might be running out of items to sell. And so this is a quick way in order for you to build back up that inventory. So as you can see, I have 1,118 slots. And I have 982 items. So I usually like to stay around 1,000 or so, just so I have about 118 just spare items. But a lot of times, if you spend a lot of time in the game waiting for things to craft, if you're only, if you're only selling the items that you craft, you'll quickly run out because you, you have a limited amount of time. Now, for those that only hop on once or twice a day, and fill up their crafting bar, that may not be an issue because you might be crafting more items than you're selling. But if you're spending time inside the game, then it's likely that you're going to be running short on items for a minute. All right. So we can post our stuff for sale. And sometimes the items sell for a lot more and sometimes a lot less. So a lot of times these specialty items that aren't your main ones, but secondary blueprints actually are worth the most. So we can see right here that the base value is 700, 375,000. But right now the trade minimum on this piece right now is over 3 million. So the max trade bonus you can do is 10 times. So you could just add a zero onto this and that would be your maximum amount that you could do. So the way the system works is that it's going to present whatever the smallest offer on the table is. So we're just going to shut, we're just going to cut this short by one dollar. So we're going to offer three million seven hundred and thirty-one thousand four hundred and ninety-nine dollars. We're going to post that. They're going to take ten percent in tax. You can also increase the amount of hours here. And you'll see the tax goes up. So this will be how long it stays before it comes off. But we're going to offer that up. So we have a level 8 item that we could potentially be getting over $3 million on, which is great because if we look at our items here, so a level 11 item is only $1.5 million. So that's uh, green on level 11 is only 2.8. So selling this, selling that on the, on here is equivalent to, in gold, you know, 11 or 12 level of a spec up item. 
Now, then another thing to look at is request. So you can put in your own request, or you can look for other things. So right now we see that this is the what people are requesting right now. So if we look here, let's look at these items here. We have 92 of these, and they're offering just under three million a piece for this. So right now we could offload this and get about 30 million, about 25 million, taking in everything. Now the bonus to this is that you actually get this amount of money. There's no taxes taken out on your side. There's taxes taken out on the poster side. So we can straight up just get this amount of money. So we sold one. We got an additional 2980 So we don't have to worry about the taxes coming out. So let's go back and look. So we can create an offer, we can and we can recreate a request. So let's go in here, and we'll just kind of go to the same. We'll post this normal, and then we'll say we're just going to do the same thing. We're going to offer 29.80, and it goes the opposite way with the offers. So we're offering the amount. So we want to go one dollar above, so that they'll see ours, right? Now the tax that we'll pay goes this way. So instead of paying this amount, you'll see that we actually end up paying a little over three million. So whether you're going to be getting something off of them, selling something on the market or off a request will sort of depend on where those two are fluctuating up and down. And if, if it's you're looking to do a lot of those, then it might be worth doing a little bit of recon and picking out which is the better of the two options. All right. The last item that you can do here in the market is create a guild request. You get one of those every day, and you can request a certain amount of numbers that, that's based off of the bounties. And then you can give items back and forth within the guild. And that is our brief overview. If you found any of this information useful, please like and subscribe. Thank you.